Today we are going to be painting a seashell in acrylics. The link for the reference photo is in the video description. You can download that and paint along with me. I'm going to be working on a Fredericks watercolor canvas board. Unlike your usual canvas board, two things. One, it's super, super smooth. Two, it's not gonna warp like many of the generic terrible, terrible things you find at local art supply stores. So this one is one of my favorites to paint on for acrylics. And I know you're thinking, well, it's watercolor. Why are you doing that with acrylics? I love these for acrylics because they're so, so smooth. So it's really easy to get fine detail. It's really easy to get smooth blending. If you have been working in acrylics and you're having a really hard time where the finished results is kind of bumpy and rough looking, your canvas may be too rough. Try a smoother surface will make a huge difference. This canvas was provided to me by Fredericks. So thank you to Fredericks for this canvas to use during the live stream. I would love to hear what medium you want to see for these live streams and what subject matter. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this guy is paint the background. I am going to be using my fine mist sprayer and a mop brush to get that really smooth out of focus. Ooh, I did not clean this mop brush very well last time. But um, to get that smooth out of focus background. And let's go ahead and put some color on the palette. I think I will go with cobalt blue and I'm gonna mix some aqua with that. And then I'm definitely gonna need some raw sienna and white for the sand. The sand is mostly gray, so it's mostly gonna be black and white. But we'll get a little bit of raw sienna in there. And I need a paintbrush. I'm going to go with this number 12 Filbert. A larger brush may be easier, but in my case, because I'm at the easel and it's not easy for me to go to the sink to wash a larger brush, I'm just gonna go with this one. Okay, I'm gonna mix some of the blue really pretty blue and I'm gonna throw in some white. I'm just gonna make a mess of color here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and throw the, oh, that is a pretty color. I wonder if I remember to paint this the right side up. I always hate, it doesn't really matter, but I half the time paint the, so it's upside down with the background or the, the backing with it says Fredericks. I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. But it's right side up tonight. So I'm just gonna do this in a sort of diagonal. Now if this starts to dry, all I'm gonna do is take my fine mist sprayer and go over that. You don't wanna overdo it, just light mist. Links for the supplies I'm using are in the video description. Now let's add some white. So I work my way out here. I'm just gonna put thick white so I'm not mixing a lot of water or anything else. Because the canvas is already wet, I don't need to mix as much water in with my paint over on the palette. So I can just take a chunk of paint, go right over that. I'm gonna mist that again just to make sure that doesn't start to dry. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling in the raw sienna, black and white. Anytime you see a grayish color, you know that's just black and white. And then whatever color you want on top of that. That gray, by the way, that I'm mixing here is way too, like, whoa, that is too dark. Let's take a chunk of white and I'm gonna mix out from the side. Now, the reason that I didn't just take a chunk of paint and mix straight into that pile, it would have taken too much paint. It would have taken a very long time to get this light, light enough. So by just coming from the side, and I can just slowly pull the color I want in until I get it where I want, that is a much safer way to go. And now I'm gonna paint this in here. And I'm still a bit, I'm gonna pull a little bit more raw sienna, a bit more white into that. And one of the things that I do at the bottom are on my easel, you can't really see it right now, but I have contact paper that lines my easel. So like right now I'm getting a ton of paint. Let me see if I can lower this. You can see I'm getting a ton of paint down here. I, this contact paper over the years, that will build up, it'll get really thick, but all I have to do is change the paper. So it's no big deal. Very, very easy. When I used to paint just straight onto the wood canvas, what I would have to do is take a razor blade and scrape that off. I mean, you can do it, it's not the end of the world, but this contact paper or shelving paper, it's fairly inexpensive and just every few years I swap it out. Makes things much easier. Now this is too dark, so what I'm gonna do, I wanna keep this wet still, so let's miss that again. I'm gonna wipe the paint off my brush and just go on right over that. 
I want this to transition really soft between the blue and the sand. I do not need this perfectly smooth. I'll smooth this out with a mop brush. Let's grab a bit more white paint. And that's pretty good. Actually, I think I do want it a little bit lighter back here. And I don't need it to be exact to the reference photo. I'm just using this as a loose guideline. So what I'm gonna do, this may create more strokes because like I said, I didn't clean this very good last time. I need to use brush cleaner and soak it, but let's see how it is for my first layer and then I've got a nice soft one that will smooth out any streaks the somewhat damaged brush might cause. I'm just doing little half circles and I am not touching very hard. If you push very hard with your mop brush, you start creating strokes instead of getting rid of them. If you look at the brush and see how I've got a lot of paint, I'm pushing too hard in all honesty because I'm in a really weird position with where the camera is located. But that will create streaks. You wanna ideally use a very light hand, barely add any pressure there. And look how nice and soft this already looks. So now I'm gonna switch over to the brush that's in a little bit of a healthier condition because I actually did clean this one. And I'm gonna get those final strokes out. You can get that look of an oil painting very easy by doing the wet into wet blending like this. So if you've worked with acrylics and you didn't like how rough they looked, they, you can make them look just like an oil painting. Rinsed all my brushes, let me dry this. What I'm gonna do is take, to create the look of sand just along the edge here, I am going to take a brush, this is super stiff, I don't know if you can see like really damaged, I don't clean it well on purpose because these work so much better if they're stiff. You can also use an old toothbrush, those are excellent, but these I find to be easier and I will use a palette knife to do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is with a separate brush, mix in some different colors. Let's start, I'm gonna make a darker color, so let's go with some raw sienna, some black, and some white. I really just want darker versions of what, whatever colors I've already used in the sand. That's what I want here. And I've gotta thin it with a decent amount, amount of water. For this to work, it's gotta be a lot thinner than you normally would use. So now, I can just dip that in there, and I'm going to flick the paint right along the edge here. I've gotta be careful not to go too crazy because I don't wanna go way back here. If I do get it where I don't want, all I'm gonna do is take a, a damp paper towel and wipe it off. I just want that along the bottom so we get that little bit of detail. This is the easiest way to make sand. Now, as I move back here, what I'm gonna do is take a clean brush, a little bit of water, actually I can just use the one I used earlier because it's already wet, and I'm just going to slightly go over that it's gonna wipe some of that down so I don't have too much sand moving back here. Just soften that out. Just a little bit of damp. If it's wet, it erases all of it. I'm not trying to do that. It's smudging it just a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing, but with white. I don't even need to mix any other colors in it. Just white by itself is fine, but I do need to thin it out with a decent amount of water. I don't think you can really see what I'm doing here. We go. So I'm just thinning that with water first and I'm using a separate brush. The reason that I'm not using the brush that I'm going to flick the paint with is that if I do, that brush gets overly saturated with water. I find that these stiff brushes, when they get too much water, they don't flick paint very well. So I want this to stay as dry as possible. So I always mix the color I want with a separate brush. Now, same thing, I'm gonna pull the palette knife towards me to create little white specks. And if I want them thicker, I'm gonna add a little bit of water so I get some thicker globs in there. You want variation, there we go. Now this brush has too much of the dark color, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse that a little bit. So I get some more pure white. It's getting some dark gray mixed in there from the previous layer. There we go. And then anywhere, if I went up too high, I'm just gonna take that brush again, soften that out. Done. 
Now we have sand that's just in the foreground and you still get that nice blurry background. So easy to do. Now we are going to dry this. What I am going to do is take this and I wanna tape it at both upper corners. That is very important. Do not just put tape, one piece of tape in the middle thinking you're gonna save on tape. It's not worth the trouble. Two corners. The reason for that is if you tape it here, this whole thing is going to be sliding back and forth as you draw it on. Now the transfer paper, that you don't tape down. That you just slide under and this can move around as you go. So I'm using white transfer paper and I'm just going to slide that under. And your transfer paper, what I usually do if you get the ones that come in these big, huge, huge sheets, I just cut it down into smaller, more manageable pieces and you just move this around as you're working. But don't tape the transfer paper down. And all I need to do is trace over this. Make sure that's showing up okay. Not well, I can barely see my lines. Oh, you can see my transfer paper is super, su oh, maybe you can't, it's really used. I may have to find a different piece to make this work. Or a black one would actually, eh, I'd rather not use black, but I could if I have to. My colors are so light. Now I've drawn more details than I really need here. I just need my general shape. Most of this I can freehand in pretty easily. Can you see it? Okay, I'm starting to be able to see it better. I just had to turn the paper some, find a, an area that wasn't as heavily used. I'm also pushing a lot harder than I normally do. I don't love the black transfer paper because I find it to be harder to cover all the way. Sometimes it shows through a little bit. I really don't have that problem usually with the white. Let's see, was that good enough? Good enough, I can see what I need. Again, if you've got ideas for next week's live stream, please let me know in the comments. Just remember, it has to be something I can get done in about an hour. Okay, so what I'm gonna start with is the inside area of the shell. Let's go ahead, what colors do I wanna do? I think raw sienna, magenta, and white will probably get me that color. I am going to mix some of my quidonka donk, I'm just gonna call it magenta now, with my raw sienna. Let's throw a bit of white in there, and now we're getting this beautiful peach. If I need to, I can add a bit of yellow, I think I do need to, and a lot more white. Let's pull more magenta in. I don't need the color to be exact. I just need it close. And that's a nice peach color. Maybe a little bit of red oxide. So I've got some red oxide. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that in there too. That gave me my color. There's what I needed. So what I am going to start with, now when you ask or you're thinking, how do you know what colors to mix? experience. The more you paint, the more you blend, use less colors. One of the best ways you will learn what colors to mix, use less colors. So if you buy a set, you've got 50 different colors. Don't use all 50. Pull out five and work from that. Black and white are usually in most pieces, not all of them, but in most pieces I'll use black and white. And then pick a couple of other, a few other colors. You don't need a million colors. If you're using a million colors, you're not really learning to blend and usually your paintings come out being a bit chaotic color-wise. They, they're just kind of bizarre, things aren't meshing together well. When you mix from a smaller set of colors, you are much more likely to end up with something that is more harmo harmonious to, or to itself. Like it, I'm going to use the same, like I use raw sienna in the sand, I wanna use raw sienna in this peach color. It's gonna make that sand, the, the peach, look better because it's a color I already used somewhere else in the painting. I don't wanna just go get a new color I haven't used yet if I can avoid that. Okay, so we've got this inside of the shell. I'm gonna start with one solid color and then I'll come back and add the highlights. And I'm just using a larger filbert brush. You can use a smaller brush if that's more comfortable for you. That's another thing, the more you paint, you'll get comfortable using a fairly large brush and getting it to do what a small brush can do. And that's another thing that comes with experience. I remember a teacher once taking his from students, I was watching him paint or teach, and he'd take the brush away from students if he felt it was too small. Don't use that, learn to use the big ones. You'll do that naturally. There's no reason to make it harder for yourself in the beginning. Use what's comfortable to you. 
So I'm gonna wipe that brush off and I'm gonna reload with water and a bit of white. That's too much water. So I'm gonna have to dab this on a paper towel that's under my easel. I've got some streaks. So as I lighten this, I may as well make my life easier getting some details with these streaks in this, the shell. And look, it just so easily, I've got detail without like, it's all blended and nice and I didn't even have to put much effort into it. You just wanna do it while it's still wet. When it dries, it makes it a little bit more of a challenge. But because this is so smooth, now here's the thing, don't over blend it. Don't keep reworking the same area or you lose the dark areas. Now there I do need to switch to a smaller brush. This brush is a little frayed, so it can't get the tiny area I need. Do I not have a healthy, looks like I do not. Oh, yeah. I think I have used you with, what did I use you with? I'm just a little concerned I used it with OMS or something. Don't ha hopefully you don't have oil on you. I don't think I did. No, it's fine. Okay. few little streaks in here. I don't want to go too crazy. Then I can take another brush. Um, do I have a clean brush over here? I don't even know what you're from. You are really damaged though. That is a frayed brush, but it'll work. It's just clean, a little bit damp, and I'm going to soften out some of those lines. And then we've got a little lighter area going the opposite direction here. And then I'll add some shading once this layer dries. We've got a light area here as well. Let's get some more white. And I'm just gonna take this other brush and smudge it down. Now, the nice thing is you can see the edges here, kind of frayed, not super clean. Doesn't matter because I haven't painted that part yet. It will matter, just not yet. Now, I can use the same brush. I'm gonna mix some white in with the color I was previously using for the base of the shell and pull in a little bit more of the raw sienna so it's a little bit more of a golden color. How many times can I say a little bit? Apparently a lot. And we're gonna come right down here. This is a little dark. That's okay, I can come back later with highlights. Now, one of the reasons I'm not having to put worry about a base layer, like all of this is showing up really well over the blues, is that I've got so much white mixed in with it. Since they're all light colors, it makes everything a little bit easier. Look, I said a little bit again. I feel I should get a reward for how many times I say it. Now, this is gonna need to get way lighter, so I'm gonna wipe the paint off my brush. I don't even need to clean it in water. Now don't over blend. I want some of that previous color. See that golden tone? Leave that in there. I'm not trying to completely cover everything. That's definitely something we have a tendency to do to just keep blending and blending and blending. One brush stroke look good for, so 50 must look amazing. No, like just a couple of brush strokes to blend out. Don't over blend. Okay, now we've got more of this orangey color. Pay attention to those ridges. I'm just gonna go one solid color. We'll do all of our shading and everything right over that. Now the color being perfect, no big deal. What you wanna watch if you're trying to make your work look more realistic is that you get your values right. Are your lights light enough and your darks dark enough? That matters much more. We have a tendency, and if you find yourself in this, this same position, we have a tendency to think, if I just knew the right color, mine would look more realistic. It's not the color, it's rarely the color. There are exceptions, there are times like using yellow in a portrait, oftentimes it makes things look sickly, but more often than not, the problem isn't the color that you're using, it's your values. Are your lights light enough, darks dark enough? So if you can get yourself to stop focusing so much on color and start focusing on what really matters, the values, then your work is gonna look a million times better. 
I've seen where people want to spend so much time before they even start painting, fussing over color theory and learning color theory. It's not the thing that matters so much. I'm not saying there's not a place for it, but it's not everything. And that's the, the problem that a lot of people, when they're beginning, they think that the color is just, it's everything. You'll definitely want to get that out of your head. You will progress so much faster. So I've used more of that peach color. As I say, don't worry about color. I'm telling you I'm changing colors. But using that peach color, let's pull that down here. And now that lighter color with the white, you've got some streaks in here. This brush is probably going to be too thick for what I'm about to do. I don't know it works. I'm holding it to the side. I'm going to start getting these little streaks on the shell. And they start curving up. So don't, that's the other thing. You have, people have a tendency, they'll do one line and like, okay, that curve is perfect. It looks so good. I'm going to do that over and over and over again. It won't look right. Look at the reference photo, how these start curving this direction. They curve up. These are the things you want to watch in that photo. Okay, that gives me a really good base to work with. I'm gonna dry this and we're gonna start shading everything. Now notice right now, it looks like a weird cartoon. That's where the shading comes in. So not just detail, we've gotta add detail, but the shading is what's really gonna make a big difference. How do I keep my paintbrush wet while painting? I keep adding more paint and more water. Reload it as needed. I know that seems overly simplified, but that's really it. Like I don't even think about it, it just, I reload it. So let's start getting some of these darks in so I can better judge values. I'm gonna grab some raw sienna and black. Now normally black isn't, and especially on something like this, would not be my go-to to make everything darker, but this actually does have a really dark area in here. I'm gonna add a bit of magenta in with my black. So it's a bit more rich. And some water, of course, to thin it out so it'll blend out nicely. There we go. And I'm gonna take this clean brush that has a little bit of water on it and use that to smudge things out. Gotta be careful because it's got a decent amount of water, which means it starts to erase instead of just smudging. Thin that out. Yeah, the magenta looks so good in with that black. It kind of looks just black to me on screen, but in person, that's a much more realistic look. And this is sketchy, this isn't perfectly smooth. I've got a few little guys out here. You see that line right there? Way too bold. Let's just thin that out, pull that out, that'll work. We've got a shadow that comes under here. Now this is gonna be too thick, but watch. I could use a liner brush to do this, but being that I already have this brush out, this will make it easier. I'm just gonna push that back. This brush again is a little bit damp. I'm gonna load it with a bit more water because it is starting to dry. And that's why I'm able to push this back so easily. This line needs to be a lot thinner, so I'm gonna keep pushing that. We've got a little bit of a shadow in here, a little ridge, some shading. That is way too bold, but that's no big deal. That's what I'm gonna take this brush from, for and smudge that. And then I'm gonna take some magenta with that black again. Let's bring some red oxide in there. I just need to make a dark, dark color from the peach I used earlier. I want a bit of a shadow right in here. I'm gonna make mine a bit more bold than what the reference photo had. Let's get a little bit more water on this second brush. Again, this brush just has water. And I'm gonna pull that. See, it's almost too much water though because look how I pretty much just erased that. I want a little bit more than that. Stop, whoever's doing that.
you guys can't hear. Someone's chewing on feet or licking something or something over there. I'm just pulling that shadow up. See how I start to create more dimension in this. I'm gonna pull this right along the edge here. I'll be putting a highlight over it, which will make more sense later. I'm just lightly going over this. Now, one of the reasons this works so well is this canvas is so smooth. If you're working on a rougher canvas, that is gonna be harder. You're not gonna get the same look with the shading. It'll be much bumpier. Push this back. Create some of these little lines, blend those out a bit. And then we've got a shadow that goes right along the outer edge. Let's get that in. And I can use the same thing, just the magenta, black, a little bit of red oxide. This color is working really well for my shadows. but I'm gonna definitely need a bit more water on this because that is bold. We wanna tone that down some. And by some, I mean a whole lot. Actually, it'd probably be better to do a little bit more with the red oxide there on that shadow. We'll come back through. And I wanna start building this texture too. So like here, you can see those brush strokes. Good, leave them. Uh, that just gave me some free texture without a whole lot of effort. We have a tendency to want to over blend everything and it gives you a very unnatural plasticky look. When you get some brush strokes, leave them. That, that's just added detail very easily. Oops, that's a lot of paint. Let's wipe some off. See, as I streak this, I'm pulling it the direction of the shell. We want this to round out. This will look better once I get the shadow under the shell too. Same thing, curve that around. Let's pull this one in as well. I'm leaving those streaks, don't over blend. Now we've also got a darker shadow, I can use the same color, right under the shell. And I'm gonna pull this just a bit into the sand, not crazy. We're midday here, so we don't have super crazy harsh shadows. Let's see how I mean, I'm just using the same colors I already used. This isn't the color of the shadow in the reference photo. That doesn't matter. I'm using colors I've used in other areas of the painting and it works. This is what I'm talking about with do not overly fuss over perfect colors. That's just not that big of a deal. Pull that shadow out just a little bit here. Make sure to smudge that out. Okay, let's rinse this and I'm going to start bringing in some of the whiter highlights. Again, you can bid on this. The link is in the video description if you want your chance to buy this. Its starting bid is $65. It is an eight by 10. Okay, a little bit of white here. Some of these I'm not gonna blend at all. I just want them to be pretty harsh. I'll have to switch to a smaller brush in just a moment. But I can get some of these bigger shadows in first. See how I fan this out where I follow the direction of the lines of that shell? It's a little too much. Let's tone that down even more. And then we go here, I'm gonna pull highlights in there and just let these fade out. Same thing I did with the shadows, I'm leaving those streaky. I'm not trying to make it perfectly smooth. Let's 
And the big thing is just to keep working on it. Look as I continuously work how much better it keeps getting. Just little changes are gonna make a huge difference. You can switch to a liner brush or a round brush if it's easier for you to get these types of streaks. Okay, I am gonna switch to a liner brush now and we're gonna come through here and start defining these edges. Remember the harder you push, the thicker your line will be. If you want a really thin line, you're not gonna push as hard. I'm gonna keep this a little bit wiggly as we move through here. Pretend you've had too much coffee, which is my actual situation tonight. Um, am I, are you wisp, wiping your brush on a towel to lessen the amount on your brush? So I'm doing two things on my, that's a good question. Let's show you that. I've got a wet paper towel here, so I occasionally wipe it on that, but I also, hit the right button, Lisa. I also have a, move my stuff out of the way so you can see. You can see how much I've been wiping my brush on this. This is all, I've always got a paper towel and this is, well, it's half wet, half dry just because I keep wiping water on it too. But I always have a paper towel on my easel or under my easel so that I can very easily wipe my brush. So yes, I'm always wiping it there, but I'm also testing here. You can see my lines. I am constantly somewhere the brush gets wiped before it hits the canvas. It's such a good question. Uh, so that I don't have some big, huge glob of paint. It's a really good habit to get into. Glad you asked that because I didn't even think to mention it. All right, put some little detail with the lines in here. And this is a good example. One of the things that you see a lot, or I see a lot when people submit things for critique, which I need to do one soon, um, but when we do the critiques, they're just not done yet. They're not bad, they're just not done. Look at how, I mean, where if we go back 10 minutes ago, the difference in this from just keep layering. Lightening this area quite a bit. And the nice thing is it helps you, if this is dark at the tip, so this is just a good design thing. If this area here, if the tip of that shell is super dark, it's gonna pull your attention right off the page. By lightening it, which the reference photo has anyway, but lightening that up, it helps keep you in this area so you're not drawn off as much. You always wanna try to keep the viewer on your artwork as long as possible. So it almost works kind of like a page blocker instead of being, if there was something dark here, your eyes would just naturally move right off the canvas. See, if there's a big thick chunk, so I've got to wipe that off on my, my easel. And I'm always thinning the paint with it when I use a liner brush with at least a little bit of water. If you don't, it will be a thick globby mess and it is not going to work how you're hoping. Kind of like right now. know why I don't paint shells more. Every time I do, I love them so much. They're really easy to make look super realistic, but they don't actually take that much time. You guys remember I did with the water soluble graphite and it was so, oh, that one took a little bit more, but it looked so amazing. Really cool subject to paint. I'm gonna smudge that line just a bit. There we go. And I need a medium peach. Let's grab you. Get a 
right along this edge. I'm going to pull white back in over the top. But I want to make the edge, the shell look a bit thicker. Also make this a bit bumpier here. Again, think caffeine. A little bit of a shaky hand is good there. I'm going to take this with some darker magenta as well. Let's get a little bit more of a shadow right under here. Pull that out. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is dry this. Let me get the white and I'm going to dry it and put a little bit more shading and we'll be all done. The trick to making this look good, it's not about a ton of detail or the perfect color. It's your values. Light's light enough, dark's dark enough. That's it. That is all it really takes to make, oh, that's a big glob of paint, to make this look really good. Apparently I need a little bit more. There we go. Just right on that edge, just making that look a little bit thicker. Let's pull some straight white, make some of these really bright. Remember, if you have an area that doesn't feel light enough, no matter how much white paint you put on it, you just cannot get it to be light enough. It's probably because what's next to it is not dark enough. Make the area next to it darker, your whites will appear brighter. If, that's, if you're trying to get them lighter and you just can't. few more definite lines and then again I'm smudging them a bit. So this is a good project for a beginner but it also shows people get too worked up on the dry brushing everything as a beginner that that's just what you do as a beginner. You don't need to. You can make something that looks really good because I don't like how dry brushing looks. I think that's a very hi I don't know how to paint method. Oh I just got a bunch of thumbs downs. But it's something that people teach who don't know how to, to, to paint. Um, in a more advanced way, we'll put it that way. You can't, it's not hard to do. Just use a little bit more water, use a smoother canvas. Okay, I'm gonna dry this and we'll add a little bit more detail, a little bit more shading and we'll be done. He's just about finished. I love this painting. Okay, so you can see this edge. I think this can be a lot sharper. Now I don't want it too sharp. I do like the softness of it, but a little bit more. And so I don't wanna just make a heavy line around the edge. I, I wanna just a little bit of a shadow there. That will be enough. So that brush actually should work okay. I need one to, oh no, I'll use you and then I'll blend with you. So a little bit of my red oxide. I'm gonna pull some magenta and a teeny bit of black. More magenta. Now that's obviously really harsh, so I'm gonna take a brush that's a little bit damp. Actually, this one's kind of really wet. And I'm gonna smudge that out. Look how pretty that is. Oops, let's move you a little bit more. I'm gonna make my edge a little bit more defined. And pull that in, round the way the shell moves. Okay, a little bit more. I've got too much water on that brush. Let's do that one more time. I've got too much water in the paint and I've got too much water in the brush that I'm blending with. You've got to find a balance there. Okay, pull those streaks out. I don't want perfectly smooth. That will not look good. It will look like a plastic toy. You can also pull some of these shadows, same color, out into the sand because you would have a little bit of a reflection from the, the shell. So you can use that same color. And 
And as long as what you have on there underneath is completely dry, let's say you do something, you hate it, use a brush with water, erase it, pull it right up. It'll come right up. If you're using good paint, I will say I've seen students use crappy paint and the previous layers came up too. So Liquitex Basics, never had a hard time with that. Any of the Liquitex products have always been fine. Goldens would be fine. I like the Liquitex Basics because they dry very flat. So it, one, makes it easier to photograph, but also the tracing and transfer paper method works very well with this, where if you're using a higher gloss, let's say Golden, and then these are considered higher end, Goldens or Liquitex Heavy Body, Liquitex Soft Body, they're considered a higher end professional paint, but tracing and transfer paper does not work with it. <laughs> well, they kind of work. I shouldn't say it doesn't. It doesn't work as well. Or a charcoal pencil. And these, this just works well for my technique. So I don't choose Liquitex because they're cheap, or Liquitex Basics, I should say, because they're cheap. They just work so well for my techniques. And you guys know I will spend money on the best of the best colored pencils and the best of everything. I would with acrylics too, these just work. So it's just one of those nice, happy surprises that they happen to be really inexpensive compared to some other ones. And that's what's funny to me too. So I, I've talked about how much I dislike generic brands like Hobby Lobby's generic. People say, yeah, but we want cheaper supplies or Arteza, we want these cheaper supplies. They're not that much cheaper, if cheaper at all. A lot of these generics are the same prices as Liquitex Basics. Why wouldn't I use the good stuff? So we have a tendency to jump to these generics that Hobby Lobby, that Michaels, they're not good. Blix, I don't like theirs. I don't like any of those generic paints. This is about the same cost, but works so much better. Now this is not what I would use for everything. If I'm gonna do an acrylic pour, I'm gonna use Liquitex Soft Body. Um, it's, you want something that's more pigmented, so it depends on what you're doing for sure. Different techniques. If I'm gonna use a palette knife, I'm gonna use my Liquitex Heavy Body. So it's not one fits everything, but for this type of painting, for my detailed stuff, this is my preference. I wanna make this shadow just here a little bit darker. So I'm gonna pull some black in with that magenta and red oxide. I don't wanna use just straight black, that would be a bit too much. Right in here. And I'm barely going to smudge that, not much at all. And I'm smudging in this case both up to the shell and down into the sand. See, that just makes that, that crease a little bit deeper. And then that's fine there. Do I have anything else I wanna do? I think we're about done. I need to sign it. I dab my finger and then I'm gonna smudge it with the brush because I don't want it that dark right there. Use spots. I don't know why I whisper when I try to make something small. I always notice that when I edit these videos. I'm taking some of that aqua color and I just want a little bit. What this is gonna do is pull him right into that background. It doesn't even need a lot little bit of a reflection from that background. And it's the exact same color I used from the water. I'm not introducing any new colors. Just that little, little bit of extra. My last tip for you, when you are signing your name, I wanna figure out where I want this. Do I want it right here? Do I want it here? So what I usually will do is take a pencil and I just hold it in the two locations to see where I think it would look best. I think if I sign my name, what's gonna happen is the viewer is gonna go like this, down to the signature and right off the canvas. So I'm just gonna sign it over here. So I'm going to take a white charcoal pencil and write out my name. And the bonus of doing this is one, if I do this and decide that I don't like where it's located, I can erase it and do it again, it'll erase, no problem. The other thing is sometimes people have a hard time with the paintbrush making their signature look like their name. So here I wrote it with a pencil, it's very easy to do. So I'm gonna take my liner brush and I'm just gonna do this with white. I don't want the signature, actually I'll do it with a little bit of the blue too. I don't want the signature to be super bold, super dark. I wouldn't sign it with black. Like I want the signature to be there, but I don't want it to be like 
pay attention to me. It shouldn't be your main focus. I've seen people where they'll take like red and always sign their signature with red and it's like, that's an interesting choice. So let's go ahead and sign it. And now as I sign this, a little bit more water here. Got to make sure to thin that paint out so it'll actually write. I do, I can lift the brush wherever I need to, because you can't move it in one loop-de-loop, -loop. but I can do one line, lift it, do the next, lift it. And it looks exactly like my signature would when I'm handwriting it because I'm just tracing over what is already there. But I like, I'm liking this color because you can definitely see the signature without like, it's not drawing attention away from the shelf, but it's still there. Hey, you, yes you, I see all your unused art supplies over there. Oh my God, those brushes aren't even opened yet. Tragic. You keep buying new fancy materials, but you don't use them because you don't want to waste them. Stop making your art supplies sad. Sign up for art lessons for as little as $4 a month. There are over 300 painting and drawing lessons available when you sign up and new ones every week. Patreon.com slash Lockery.